All right, deploying the app to Firebase hosting is actually relatively simple because we've already done a lot of the work to get it there. Um, we're already linked with Firebase and we're already using, uh, we're, I mean, we're basically already set up with Firebase hosting. So if you actually go to this link right here, this is where our Firebase hosted app can go. And at, at the end of this video, I'll show you how to get your custom domain set up to, to point to this. All right, so if you go into your command line, you want to, in the last video, we were in the functions. Um, we were in the functions directory because we were working with our cloud function. So you're going to want to back out to the main directory, and then within this, you're going to call. You're going to run npm uh, build. Npm. If you go to the readme, it actually has the command. It's npm run build, and this is going to set it up for production. Basically what this is going to do is compress your whole app into uh, one file or a few files and then we can send that file to Firebase. Alright, so it looks like everything is set there. Now we can just do Firebase deploy. And because as we've been going through building this, because we've already set it up with Firebase and we already linked it to our Firebase app, deploying it is it already knows where to deploy it. Um, if you remember back, and I'll link to all the other videos below. If you remember, we set it up with, um, you know, we set it up in this Firebase app. And when we first set up Firebase in our view project, we, we chose hosting and we went through a few, uh, we, the, we went through a few of the configurations for hosting, but it's all very simple. Um, but yeah, basically this will, it'll deploy, you'll notice right now it's deploying our our cloud function again, that send email function that we created in the last video. So all of that gets deployed when you call deploy from the main, from the main branch there, or from the main directory rather. All right, so after we do that, you're going to notice if you, if you go here, you'll see that the app was deployed. And if you try and visit the app on this page, the app isn't there. So the reason for this is when we default installed Firebase hosting, we set public as the as the default directory. So it's looking in this public directory for the app and the app that's in there is nothing. The, I mean, this is like the base Firebase file. That's essentially this one. So really when we hit, when we did Firebase build, when we ran that first command, Firebase, or npm run build, that is gonna create our version of our site in this dist folder. And you'll see this is basically gonna have all our files right here and they're all minified. So we need to just go ahead and update where our Firebase default directory is. And we can do that in this firebase.json file here. And you'll see the public directory is, is called public and we just wanna change that to dist. And then once you do that and save it, you're gonna run npm run build again. And then once that's rebuilt, cause it, it does need to rebuild that change. And then once that's rebuilt, you can redeploy with Firebase deploy. And once that is finished, then the app should load for us on our page right here. All right, so that deploy finished. So we should be able to reload this URL here. And great, we see our our site as, as we would expect. And everything should still be working as it did in dev. So you could test that if you want. The next thing we're gonna look at before we change the, the host name here is we're going to look at the, the metadata on this on this site. So I have this, there's this nice website here that you can go to, which is going to show you the preview of the, of the metadata, right? So if you back out of this and the metatags.io preview, you'll see that it doesn't, this doesn't look great. So this is what, it, if you posted your link to this on Facebook, this is what it would look like. And it just really doesn't look good. Um, first off, the name, the name of our app should not have these underscores. You'll notice the underscores are also in the name up here. So we, we are gonna wanna change that, uh, as well as we want this image to load right here. 
To change these meta tags is actually relatively simple. So let me show you how to do that. And then I'll also show you how to change the name and add this favicon. Going back to our code here, if you find the index.html file at the very base of it, that's where actually the, the that's this is like the actual highest level of, of the app. So you can see this div app ID here. This is what's actually used to bind our our app dot view here is going to be is going to be bound to that because this is just another template that's then being called within this index. But then everything view related is going through that app. So this is kind of like the highest level of the of the of the app. Um, so definitely don't remove this. I uh, really don't change much of this, but the title you can change. So, so we change that to travel treasury. You'll notice in in Chrome that gets changed there. Uh, if you want to add the the favicon here, you first are going to need to download one and place it into the static folder. So I have one here that I'll drag in and. It's just that chest there. All you need to do is also in the index file is use this link. Uh, now the reason mine was already showing up there was uh, because I was locally developing and it was probably cached, but it wasn't actually set up. Um, but you will need this to actually set that up. And then that is referencing this file here. So, so that will update that. Then uh, if you wanted to, if you wanted to add Google Analytics, which I would recommend adding, it's pretty simple. You could just go create your account in Google Analytics and it'll actually give you a code to, to add into your, into your website. And it's just gonna be a code, it's gonna be like a little script tag that you can add right here. Um, I would recommend that so that you could track how many users are actually viewing your site, but I'm not gonna go into detail on that. I think it's pretty simple to set up and you'll be able to figure that out yourself. But this is where you would actually link that. Uh, the last thing that we wanna do is add those meta tags, which are going to give us the better, the better content for our, um, for our social links. So I already have them all here. I'm just gonna paste them in and I'll go over them a little bit. There's two different ones. There's these OG tags are, they stand for open graphics, which most all sites actually will use this. Twitter also requires two different ones. So I'd recommend putting both of them in. Uh, the OG ones though are almost universal. So really all it is is, you know, the site name, the title, description. Uh, the image here is gonna be the image that will pop up, you know, in the in the Facebook block or whatnot. So that you're going to need to play around with. I have mine hosted on S3 because it is, you, you do want it to be hosted somewhere where it will be accessible. You can host it on the site here, but you'll need to give it a new path. I think it's just easier to put it on, on S3. So really what that means is this image URL is always going to show this image. So you just need to find somewhere to put this image. Um, uh, again, I put it just in an, an Amazon S3 bucket, but you can probably, I think you could probably use Google Drive or, or really you could find just anywhere to host an image. Um, but yeah, then the URL is just gonna be the URL of the app and all of that. So if you save this, um, we're going to deploy again. So we're, again, we're gonna to need to build it and then deploy it. And and then once we do that, we can we can check back on this page here and it should give us our updated meta tags. All right, that deploy just finished. So if we go back to this meta tag with our app URL there, you'll see it looks so much better. This is a this is definitely something you want and need to do because now the main way you're going to get your app out there is on these social media sites. This is the main free way you're going to do it. So you definitely want an image that looks really nice and and fills up the image screen. This is nice cuz it'll show you how it looks on these different on all these different sites. So you can see this image works works on most of them. It doesn't really look great in Slack, but I don't know. I'm not I'm I'm really not too worried about Slack. The main ones I'm worried about are are yeah, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. So and this is what it would look like in Google search. So 
that's definitely definitely a nice thing that'll help with seo as well so so definitely um definitely update those the last thing you could do is add a custom domain i already have i already have the app deployed so i have it deployed on another on another um firebase account essentially so it, everything I showed you up until now is exactly the same, roughly exactly the same. It's just a different account. All you would do here is enter your custom domain and it's going to ask you a couple things. So it's already verified in another project. So it's not going to let me do that here, but basically it's going to give you a, a, a DNS record to put in your DNS records. So uh, I could show you, I, I, I don't know that this is really, I think it's pretty, I think this is actually pretty easy to do. Like I think it's pretty well documented the way Firebase will tell you what to do. I would highly recommend getting your domain from Namecheap. So Namecheap is right here. There, I don't know, I've worked with a bunch of different uh, hosting providers throughout my career and Namecheap has been honestly the easiest and the cheapest. So I do have a link down below that you can use and it is an affiliate link. So it will give me a small commission if you do buy a domain through Namecheap. But if you don't have a domain yet, you're definitely gonna want one because you don't want your app hosted on, on this domain here. A, that's not gonna be good for SEO. Uh, B, it's never gonna be, like no one's ever gonna know to type this in. So it definitely, I mean, it's, it's relatively cheap to to get one, you know, $10 a year, $12 a year at most. I mean, it depends on what you pick, but you can get them as low as like $2 a year. Anyway, though, I'll show you real quick what my DNS records look like for the traveltreasury.app. Uh, you can see I just have a few, uh, if I go to advanced DNS records, when, when you're in um, Firebase hosting in this verify ownership, it's going to tell you to put this text record in here. And this is all you do. You just add add a new record, uh, choose text record, and then and then just enter the value that it tells you to, to enter there. And then it's also going to tell you to enter these these values here. Uh, but that's how you do it in Namecheap. You just add, and then you can add the A record as well. But Firebase will tell you uh, exactly what values to add. I'm guessing it's probably the same IP addresses, but the verification is definitely gonna be a different value there. And once you do that, it's pretty nice because Firebase is also going to automatically give you an SSL certificate. So you'll notice this is a connected, this connection is secure and you can look at the certificate and it is valid, um, but you don't even need to worry about uh, you don't need to worry about maintaining this or anything with that because Firebase hosting is going to do that for you. All right, great. So at this point, the app is hosted on Firebase and using our custom domain. Everything's looking good there. A user can enter their email and basically reserve their account for the app when it does go live. And with this landing page, we can now start promoting our app and we can start getting users to essentially sign up for our app before the app is even live. This is arguably something you could do before you even start building your app and the images of your app could just be made in you know Adobe XD or something and and you can kind of give this could kind of prove the concept before you even do any any app development at all so the landing page is definitely a very powerful thing another benefit of it is we do have that contact section set up which is going to be required before we deploy our app we're going to need something like that for the app stores so that is definitely the main use of the landing page after the app is live. Uh, another one, as I said, is gonna be that we're gonna be able to link to both our Google version and our Apple version with this one link. So then when we're promoting our app and marketing our app, we can use this one link from the landing page and put that in all of our promotional materials so that regardless of what kind of device the user is using, they'll be able to get to our app. Great, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, ciao for now.